have uh, John Waliki is coming in at uh, 15. Ah, aha, here he is. Welcome. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mateo. That was fantastic. I'm really delighted to be here. Thank Ryan. you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, John. Have fun now. Well, well of course, yeah, always. So, <laughs> so, Ryan, I'm like a live demo guy all the time. And that's what you're going to see. Excellent. That Are sounds great. I, I was especially interested in your topic. I know there's a lot in there, but um, this sounded like a really fun uh, thing that I would maybe want to reproduce after the fact and, and try out as well. So I'm really excited. This sounded like a really fun topic. Um, yeah, abso so absolutely. I think um, we're just about ready to go. If you're ready, um, on, you want to- Hang on one second. What I'm going to do there. is- um, during our little talk, Ryan, I'm gonna since I can't see the live chat anymore because we're in the, the backstage. Um, I just sent you some some links. I was wondering if you could drop them into the chat for you our bet. audience if they want to yeah. follow along with some of our links here. Okay. Yeah, you bet, definitely. All right. Well, let's do it. All right. So we're gonna pray to the demo gods like uh Mateo suggested, and we are gonna roll here. Um let me do a quick introduction. And so my name is John Wallachie, and we're going to talk today about uh, containerizing and deploying your Node.js applications using some best practices. At the end, we're going to deploy our containers to IBM Cloud Code Engine, and I'll sort of take you that uh, through that as well. If you're uh, joining us just now, Ryan's been running the track today. We're in the JavaScript track. And, uh, Mateo and Lucas and, and I, and, and later after me, we've got uh, Ganesh coming up and just awesome presenters. I'm really humbled and delighted to be here uh, with them. We're gonna cover a couple of topics and um, just a little bit of background on why you're gonna wanna spend the next 30 minutes with me. I'm an IBM developer advocate, sort of a senior developer. I love to teach. I love to uh, speak at conferences and mentor at hackathons and run workshops and tutorials and now tons of live streams. Um, so this is sort of second nature. I'm eager to get out on the trade show floors and at the conferences. And next week, uh, hopefully I'll see some of you at Open Source Summit in Seattle. So look for me there in the IBM booth. Um, so that's what I do. And uh, so senior IBMer, I you know do a lot of different. So I'm an IoT guy, uh, no uh, and Node.js application developer forever and ever. Um, other roles in IBM, sort of really fun, leading the Linux efforts, and so great partnership with Red Hat uh, for two decades plus now. Um, but what we're going to spend the rest of our time talking about is how to build Node.js containers. And I'm going to spend a couple of minutes. My one slide, guys, I promised that there was going to be no slides. And I just got one because I just want to introduce the topics. Um, so what makes a good container? Where and why would you want to build containers that are uh, trusted and secure and small and production ready? Well, let's unpack those because they're really important. Um, First, number one, you want to start with a trusted base image. Um, you can go to Docker Hub and per peruse through all the containers that are out there and maybe pick one that you want to build on top of. But let's be honest, Ivan from Moscow doesn't have your best interests in mind. Okay, so maybe you shouldn't select his image as, as your base. What you want to do is select an image, a base image, that has got a pedigree and is supported and has got a, a it's being scanned and actively maintained sort of that the you want to build from recent images that are you know got all the CVs applied that have the right set of infrastructure and and rigor underneath them so we're all very passionate and very worried now about our software supply chains and the software bill of materials and starting from a trusted image really gives you that security that you know you're going to uh, really require especially as you get to production you want to know what your application is running on top of and and so number one let's start with a trusted base image and i'm going to introduce you to uh, what's called universal base images from Red Hat. 
Um, they're free, and, and I've been building with them for now a couple of, you know, two years, um, starting to get good at it, though I rarely call myself an expert. Um, number two, secure. So you can throw a kitchen sink into a container and call it done. It works, but it's got an entire vast attack surface. And a secure container is going to be really tight, um, sort of that uh, you understand and you know exactly why every package is in your container. Anything more is, is a vulnerability waiting to happen. So just what oh, I always think of is how do I make this, this container as tight and small, I'm gonna install only what I need for the particular workload. And, and then nothing else because you want to make sure that, uh, well, because, you know, CVEs are going to happen, right? Versions are going to happen. And it's software, and we're all sort of building on top of other shoulders, other giants, and you know, we make mistakes. So the smallest attack surface possible is going to make your container, um, uh, hopefully, as you get to production, uh, that much more secure. Now, as you as you start to prune and um, really collate your image, you, you obviously it's going to get smaller. And maybe it gets big, and then it gets smaller over time. I very often developers will collaborate, and they they'll give me an enormous uh, in, uh, Docker file, and we'll prune it down, and we'll get it smaller and smaller. And I'm going to show you how we can do that in the next couple of minutes. We're gonna start with a pretty big container and then a, a little bit smaller container and then like as small as we can get it for the particular workload. Um, and then we wanna make sure we're production ready. When we go pick on our image, do we need all the docs? Do we need all of the extras that are sort of delivered inside of our image? No, right? What we really want is the, the production harness, the test infrastructure, and, and you'll see me um, in the next couple of minutes, I build almost everything from a make file, local, and then GitHub Actions, and then you know a variety of uh, Tekton pipelines and so forth as we get to uh, production-ready uh, OpenShift clusters and, and Kubernetes clusters. So we want to make sure that we can push our containers through the pipeline and we get consistent results out of right. We want repeatable results. We don't want, oh, I, today it looked like it worked and then tomorrow it doesn't quite work because we you know, chose poorly. Um, so we want to think through how we get to production ready pipelines. And uh, so I built, I write make files and then I write, you know, GitHub actions and I write Tekton pipelines and I, you know, pay attention to those things. So those are sort of the, the four big lessons, the four big takeaways uh, for John. All right. Um, Let's go and and so I'm not the only one that's thinking about this. And uh, I've one of my uh, ex IBM colleagues and now a Red Hatter uh, excited for him. And he's he's leading the Node application to stack. Uh, you know, he's actually part of the Open JS as well. Um, he sits as a community member on the Open JS uh, technical committee. Uh, but Michael Dawson and.